Uh, we responded from station one. We were here at the station. Truck was in the bay. I believe the engine was at a training, so we were like, set up to be first due right down here off of Alameda, so just down the road, right all the way down to the trailer park. Uh, initial arriving, coming down Alameda, we just saw a bunch of black smoke. Whenever we staged out front, uh, the way that the scene was kind of set up, there was like a trailer and then a trailer behind it. I couldn't tell if it was one or two trailers. I uh, just saw like a big column of smoke and I for sure saw the first trailer was on fire. Uh, so when I gave my BIR, I think I called it as just a single trailer on fire. Uh, and then obviously doing a 360 figured out that wasn't the case, but yeah, just a ton of black smoke, some fire, uh, at least on one trailer. Uh, so upon our arrival, I was uh, hesitant on taking command because I saw the engine was a little bit behind us, but we had staged a little bit uh, inappropriately, I suppose is the way to put it. Uh, and I knew that was going to cause a delay for the engine to even get there and start assessing the scene. So we staged, I gave a BIR, um, you know, requested the next engine to go ahead and lay a hose line for some, uh, you know, fire attack, inch and three quarter. Got out to do my 360, uh, and at that time, then everybody was already rolling up on scene. I had, I mean, BC was already right there next to us. Engine one was on the Charlie side, starting fire attack. And I think we had engine two was like right there, uh, backing up to start pumping into engine one or nursing into him if need be. Or... When we had just left the training facility, when we got the dispatch, we were responding from Bouts and South Main. Uh, when we got on scene, we had to take the second entrance to the trailer park, which ended up being on the west side, and we made a, we staged on the northwest corner of the st structure area. Uh, on arrival, from that vantage point, it was kind of hard to get a good view, but arriving, there was a large smoke column, and then once we staged, we saw one trailer on fire, uh, lots of fire load in the yard, super small, uh, enclosed trailer park. Uh, we got assigned, command was already established, we were assigned fire attack, we pulled an inch and three quarter, we pulled the cross lay to the north side of the structure for fire attack, and we also had to make our way through a fence. Engine three responded from station three itself with squad three. We initially turned north onto valley and saw a plume of smoke. We headed down, Alameda was tailing actually engine one. When we first got there, we had to find a secondary entrance into the Alameda, but we actually were able to get right behind engine one. What we were told to do was nurse engine one. We started the nursing process and then I went out and made contact with the engine one lieutenant, which was Sean O'Neill at the time. He asked me to pull a second cross lay for exposure protection. Miguel Silva and myself pulled a second cross lay, cross lay two off engine one, and then did exposure protection um, on the Delta Charlie corners where we were at. Uh, initially, we were at station three, running an errand right before change the shift. It was me, uh, Lieutenant Conover, and then acting driver operator Jacobs. Uh, we got the call, I wanna say around 1038. Well, we got the structure fire call. We were parked in front of the bay doors of engine three. So we had to jump on them, uh, unfortunately, Jacobs did make a left instead of a right down valley, which put us behind them, but in hindsight, it was a blessing in disguise as our pump failed to operate correctly. But so we ended up turning around as soon as we could. Uh, we went down valley, headed north down valley until we hit Hoagland. Upon hitting Hoagland, we made the right. We're going down. Uh, before we hit that stop, that stop sign on Almendra, or Alameda, I'm sorry. We did uh, see engine three pass us heading north. Uh, from there, we followed behind them, and uh, at this point, I was finishing putting on my gear. Uh, once I did have my gear on, we were already uh, marking on scene, and we were parked right behind truck one. And if I'm correct, we were the third engine on scene, uh, behind engine one, engine three, and then of course, truck one. Upon getting there on, on scene, I did see a lot of smoke, some flames from a trailer. I did hear some popping noises. Uh, when we were driving over there, we had 
we had some notes that they were saying there was probably ammunition in the trailers so i was just trying to get a mental picture of what we were going into obviously being third on scene i was wondering what our what our uh, assignment would be uh i believe from there we got the assignment from engine one from uh o'neill that we were going to be uh cooling down the the propane tank 50 gallon propane tank uh from there just where we were staged at we we felt it appropriate to to drop the 300 footer of inch three quarter so we went ahead and uh we were already packed up bunkered up i had a I got my iron, my set of irons. I gave the axe to Lieutenant Conover. I myself carried the the uh, Halligan. And once he, we got that assignment, I kind of just threw him to the side, knowing that our assignment was to cool down the propane tank. Uh, I went ahead and pulled the 300 footer. I got the first stack. So Tal T was there next to me. I asked him if he wanted to pull the second stack, and I was going to follow him, just like we've practiced plenty of times before. Um, we did not have any issue pulling that line. Uh, the way we had it pulled though, there was a, a light pole uh, kind of in the middle of, there was a bend, a friction point, light pole. So it kind of caught LT uh, off guard and it kind of yanked his stack where he was able to maintain it and keep pulling forward. And I don't believe we had any kinks in the line. It stretched out pretty good. We probably went 50 to 75 feet past the propane tank then turned around and dropped. I dropped my my load, and then from there I asked for water. To which at that point we were waiting for Tim to give us water. And unbeknownst, or I'm sorry, Tim did. He was aware that the that the pump was working uh, intermittently. He did get a pass down from from uh, Kristen Wallen, who drove the day before. So he was aware of that. I think we all were. I, I do not believe Chief Daniels was aware. So we were waiting on that water. Once he became aware that that there was having that engine two was having difficulties with the water source, he then gave uh, engine six the assignment of providing that 300 with water. So they unhooked 50 feet from engine two, the 300 footer, and then connected it to a stick. A 50 foot stick on engine six i believe and they ended up supplying us water engine six uh dispatched to the trailer fire at three crosses we responded from our station um immediately pulling out we all kind of glanced to the left and could see the column of smoke so we knew we had a, a decent working fire uh, upon arrival <clears throat> there was a uh, truck one up in front of us and engine two i believe behind that we kind of staged back a little ways to not cluster up the scene um, and since we have a clean cab apparatus, we kind of bailed out and just started getting dressed. Tracy needed to, still had everything to do. And, uh, at that point, um, we got tasked with securing a water source. Uh, the nearest hydrant, uh, BC Daniels had already taken a look. Uh, the nearest hydrant was going to be the one there at the corner by the gas station, Three Crosses in Alameda. Um, so... Rather than uh, leaving Tracy by himself, Tyler and I jumped in to quickly complete that task. Tyler was already uh, stretching the LDH across the street. And uh, we had a little bit of traffic concern, but LCPD was also helping with that. So um, magically, Tracy had stopped within feet of being too far away. So our LDH uh, reached with one stick. Um, and it was about then when we found out that engine two was having pump trouble. So that's why we were tasked with the the water source and became primary pumper. Um, responded from station three, uh, the new battalion one headquarters. Um, but uh, the, um, uh, I knew most of the units were gonna be coming down Solano, Maine and Alameda. So I wanted to take an alternate route where I wasn't gonna have nearly as much traffic. So I, took Valley North to Hoagland um, and then down to Alameda. So on arrival, uh, truck one, engine one, engine three were already on scene. I, uh, I was able to see the fires in the, what I would call the Alpha Delta side of the uh, 
the structure with the main fire along the Charlie Delta and then it extending to the Alpha Delta trailer as well. Um, there was heavy fire, units were already going to work, engine one was getting a line deployed uh, with engine three nursing them to give them just a little extra bump of water. Um, and I noticed the truck was moving toward the rear um, and Kaysen was the initial arriving officer. He had established command and I noticed he was trying to link back up with his crew. So um, I pulled around, was able to make my way back to where uh, the primary occupancies that were on fire um, were and, and had a quick face-to-face -face with uh, acting Lieutenant Kaysen Carter. Arriving on scene and, and getting through the command transfer process, um, a lot of it was face-to-face -face discussion just because there was a lot of radio traffic. Um, there were a lot of moving parts going on. I really wanted to, um, but given the, the specific scene, I, I knew I had two trailers on fire. We had a suspect water supply in that engine one was being nursed by, by engine three. Uh, they were working on that nursing uh, we still had a heavy volume of fire and our only water supply to secure was that we could access readily was going to be at the corner of three crosses in alameda so my my big iap or my my iap as a whole was going to be to confine the fire to the two trailers that were already on fire when i arrived and 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 prevent extension into the other two, um, which were part of that group in that block. There weren't, we had roadways protecting all the other ones, but we had windy conditions. It was hot, dry, and, and our access was a little compromised up front. So we just, um, it was to do the best with what I had. Um, I knew I was going to have I knew I had engine two coming in and engine six. So um, I needed a line on the Delta side immediately uh, because we had a, a propane tank that had been impinged on. There was heavy fire going and the, and the exposure that had a small volume of fire um, that was limited to one room was rapidly extending. So I knew we had to get water there. I had engine two drop a line um, and I was going to have engine six lay into engine two and they were going to be our primary attack pumper. Uh, I think the fact that we were able to get resources there pretty quickly was very beneficial because from that call we had a bunch of mishaps uh, engine two started having like pump issues. Uh, they either couldn't engage their pump or it was just failing or something like that. Uh, and they were like laid out, I think, to try and be another hose lines down. And so then they were having issues there. So the fact that we were able to have, I think it was engine six, like just kind of take their place helped out. Uh, water supply was a little ways off. That turned out to be kind of an issue. Uh, but we were able to get resources there very quickly. And the scene was kind of jumbled to start with, but we were able to kind of like put all the pieces back together and get things sorted. Um, chief was there he kind of took command immediately from me and then I was able to focus on just kind of like doing things with my crew and he kind of set the scene up to run very well just I guess adequate communication too. Uh, you know me failing to start the BI off saying hey we have two involved trailers set everybody up but we were able to kind of rope that back in and be like hey there's actually two we need to kind of split our focus and work on both of these structures rather than just focusing on one um, it's probably the biggest thing. Uh, well, 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 the scene, there was two trailers, ended up being two trailers involved. I believe we kept them all contained to the two trailers. And considering that on the west side of the structure, there was two more additional trailers that were super close with hoarder conditions in the yard. It went well, in my opinion, was actually a really good uh, command presence from Sean in there telling me what we needed to get done. 
um, and where he needed me. So that went very well. After that would be a battalion one arrived on scene and kind of ordered things the way that needed to be ordered very well and very quickly. I think given the circumstances, especially with the pump going down, just these snowball effects, as far as for engine two, going the wrong way, thinking we were gonna be either the first or second engine there, considering we we're in front of engine three. The fact that we were able to go the wrong way, and then on top of that, the pump not work, we were still able to overcome that, um, still keep a level head, and then that propane tank going off, being aware that we have we had potentially made the mistake of shutting down the uh, the relief valve and like I said just keeping our composure not really freaking out when that thing went off kind of startled I know it startled me I'm sure it startled everybody in that area I know a lot of people that weren't even close to that propane tank that heard it go off and said it was loud but just able to just stay there not abandon our I guess our post uh, keep hitting that Cooling it down and then once we were given a different assignment go ahead and uh, helping out engine one I believe it was engine one or engine three but helping them out and just still use that line to keep doing work uh, we could have definitely been uh, How could I say it? Uh, trying to find the word We could have been overwhelmed due to the just one thing after another going wrong, whether it was going the wrong way, whether it was the pump not working, uh, being told that we had possibly d made an error by turning off that that uh, relief valve, to just still keep level-headed, relax, take a breath, and just keep going on. I think we did good on that. Um, that was a lot of fire. Obviously, it was evident from when we first pulled out of the bay. Um, a lot of fire, a lot of stuff to do. It was a hot day, um, and so those initial crews on scene seemed like they got a pretty good knockdown, um, limiting it to the two trailers and a propane tank. Uh, we were amazed, honestly, uh, after everything calmed down and started looking around, that it didn't spread to those two exposures to the west. Um, so kudos on that. Um, uh, I think we also did well on keeping an eye on each other um, in our divisions and, and individual crews. Um, being that it was so hot that day, we were kind of keeping an eye on rehab and then just taking a personal accountability and just taking a step back like, look, man, I know it's hot. Like, you good? Like, <laughs> uh, do you need to go in? Like, doesn't matter what your bottle is saying. Like, if you're sweating, then you need to take a time out. So we are kind of, at least in the area that I was working on and the crews I was working with, we kept an eye on each other to make sure we weren't you know, going to get heat exhaustion or anything. Overall, the things that went well were uh, given the, the setbacks that we had over the scene, which I'll discuss in a bit, we, uh, we really, uh, people fell into place overall um, and we were able to contain the fire to the two trailers that were on fire we, when we got there, despite having a poor water supply initially um, and, and despite having some of the access issues that we've had uh, in windy conditions, it's still only, uh, we were able to protect the, what I would call the Bravo side exposures um, and, and keep them from being losses, especially in a park like that, mobile home park, where the units are so close together. Uh, we didn't have any firefighter injuries in spite of having, you know, a, a power line that was charged that we didn't know of because it was hidden on top of the on top of the fire occupancy it had burned through and was on top of the fire occupancy so we were unaware of that I couldn't even see that from the command post um, and I mean yeah I, the big thing is no firefighter injuries uh, no civilian injuries um, and we prevented further extension beyond the initial occupancies that were on fire in spite of a number of things that we, one, that were somewhat out of our control, but also things that we could have executed better. Uh, 
there's a number of things. A lot of the stuff I feel like was failures on my part because uh, that's what we do when we look at things, right? We kind of review internally about what we did right or wrong. Uh, me personally, being like a newer acting lieutenant, you know, this is one of my first fires on the truck where I've been uh, first due. And so like trying to establish a game plan and like lay out thoughts and everything from a truck side when you're not on an engine uh, was very difficult for me. So need to work on that, work on my BIRs, and then work on like my delegation of tasks to the crew. Uh, our staging on the truck was less than desirable. Uh, we kind of pulled in right there. It's at that little T at Alameda and like three crosses, right? And we pulled in at like the front entrance to where those uh, homes were on fire and we just blocked everybody else off. Uh, you know, definitely something that we should be working on is focusing on our staging and more appropriate staging for everybody, right? Making sure that we're giving everybody optimal entrances to, you know, these scenes. Um, after that, there's not a whole lot else we could have, you know, focused on. I would have liked to have seen, you know, water on fire faster, but just due to like engine two's, you know, pump failure, uh, water supply issues, it's not always going to be optimum. But other than that, I think everything went okay. What could have went better as a Initially, staging could have went better. We could have had a little bit better position. And then a delay in water due to a pump failure on one of the engines, not the crew's fault, but it did delay water on fire for a little while. What could have been improved on, um, probably on my part, would be relaying that the center power pole, actually where the Charlie Delta corner was at, where Silva and myself were at, was actually energized. I could have relayed that to Battalion 1 sooner. Um, secondly, would have been staging by Truck 1. They actually impeded the main entrance to the trailer park with the parking of Truck 1. So both Engine 1 and Truck 1 had to find a secondary entrance to get to the backside of the trailers. What can be improved? Obviously those little things that I just talked about. Uh, just knowing where we're going. I understand that we weren't in our district, but uh, me, uh, uh, just talking with the guys, me and uh, Lieutenant Conover could have been like, hey, Tim, we should have made a right right there. Instead of like, oh, wait, uh, I think we're going the wrong way. Like we, we should kind of, we knew where the vicinity was, but I think we were just so caught up in, in getting ready that we kind of didn't jump on it as quick as we should have. Uh, the s second thing is, well, it was, Clearly an uh, issue with the apparatus, but just, just letting it be known to, to a command on scene that you know, we have an apparatus that is functioning intermittently. Um, third thing is, and I've said it time and time again, as far as the relief valve thing, it was, uh, was something I hadn't done since Academy. So, to me, it was just like, just cool that damn thing down. If I came across it accidentally with the stream, it wasn't my intention, but it was just like one of those reactions, you know, see a big, a big blow up, loud noise, you know, you guys, guys are around, you're trying to just, you know, cool the, cool the, the area. So I think that could have been improved a little more as far as those, those points. Uh, as far as improvements for the fire, um, Obviously, the the snafu with the engine two pump. That's I mean, it's a mechanical failure. We're gonna have that. Um, I'm not sure if we could improve upon that if the driver's doing his uh, due diligence in the morning, being able to uh, check his apparatus out and everything. Uh, one of the things that I did notice in in my division, we did have some guys uh, kind of go interior on a trailer, um, a little farther in than I would like, uh, that I was comfortable with. Uh, we were able to recall them quickly, get them back outside the structure. Granted, um, you could see through the entire trailer, the walls were gone, and the only thing above them was a thin tin roof. Um, I, I could understand what they were after. We could see some flare-ups and stuff. Uh, they were growing in, in a kitchen area. Um, but I think if we had just taken a second and, uh, and reevaluated some of the uh, tactics so we can get to that corner, there were host lines on the opposite side of the trailer that probably would have easily just turned 90 degrees to their left and give a quick spray and it'd be done. Rather than putting our guys underneath a, a roof that literally had minimal support. You know, there wasn't much roof, but it, it come down, it's not going to make anybody stay.
Um, so I'm a big fan of like point of impact execution, which means, you know, when for me, it's when when we ha when we're tasked with getting something done, we get it done right the first time. So just initially, right off the bat, the first due unit, um, our truck, our truck one company, uh, just their staging wasn't optimal. Their initial staging spot um, blocked access or the the optimal access for our first due engine companies. Um, and it forced our units to have to come around and take a disadvantaged position on the fire. Um, for me, that was a really a, a big one and it kind of set the tone for some of the other things that we had. Um, had we had our first due engine been able to pull right in, um, we may have been able to get some other units in and have our second due engine lay in or even do a reverse layout, dump their tank in the engine and reverse layout after all the other units have kind of staged and put themselves in. So it, it, it just caused a little hiccup. Um, I think we overcame that fairly quickly and the plan to have engine two and engine six work on our water supply. Engine two gets a line on the ground. They go to start doing work. Their line was, in, like, was down effectively and in place. Uh, fairly quickly um, to which would have protected the second not the main fire occupancy but the fire occupancy on the alpha side um, the alpha side exposure that had lit because of the main fire occupancy um, they would have been able to protect that and cool that tank a, a lot quicker the propane tank prior to it venting um, had their pump worked and but they couldn't engage their pump we found out later that that had been a recurrent issue I, I I just didn't know that that was an issue so it's a probably something that for us on our takeaway and as part of this AAR is is when you have an issue making sure it's known to everybody um, so that we can either address it or work around it if needed um, the uh, the next the next thing um, after after we got our water supply situation taken care of we ended up engine six laid in we moved our lines to engine six uh, the crews that were assigned to do that um, engine six and part of the engine two crew and squad three uh, did that very fairly quickly um, and then we were able to get water to all the units on the scene um, fairly quickly um, comparatively I guess it's um, but Moving forward, when I when I start looking at the big picture, and that was kind of the end of, of the, the very critical. We have to get this stuff done now, or we're going to have the fire extend. Um, on the incident command side, there's some things that, I mean, we don't run these fires all that often. There's some conceptual things that we teach and and we don't always practice, um, and there, there are definitely some things that, from my perspective that I look at and that I can take away and hopefully help, you know, people in, in similar situations in the future manage a little better. So the first one was um, our units, our unit status in the city was pretty rough at that point in time uh, when we got to looking at um, where we, uh, like getting additional alarms for manpower um, that just wasn't really available or wasn't practical that we weren't going to get any more units to that scene at that time um, so I uh, we absorbed a lot of different roles and as an incident commander I I got quite a bit put on me um, and even though our units were operating almost as geographical divisions I never actually gave them those assignments their communication to me was pretty good in the fact that they were generally just using one spokesperson from that area to make all the communications it but to clean up the the tactical worksheet to clean up the communication and and make it a little clearer and more straightforward i should have assigned engine one as the Charlie division, I should have assigned engine two as the Delta division and engine six as an alpha division. Um, if I had done that, I would have limited the number of people I have to communicate with. Um, 
and been able to manage my span of control a little better. Um, so even though on the scene, it kind of played out that way, it wasn't as clean um, and I didn't have frontline supervisors where the work is being done who were very aware that that was their role. So um, it's just something, like I said, I buy into. I'm a big proponent of geographical divisions. And I just didn't do it. Um, the uh, other thing was um, I am a fan of getting my own 360. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very big on I want to get eyes um, on, on the incident as much as possible. Um, and I think it's worked out really well for me um, most of the time. Um, it's like, it, it works out well and it, I think it gives me a good insight into what's going on on the scene, what our crews are facing, what decisions I have to make moving forward. And it allows me to really get an eye on and, and kind of project the trajectory of, of, of the incident. Um, with that being said, it's incumbent on the incident commander to get back to the command unit and gather that gather everything going on put it down on paper and um, um or paper or our our tactical worksheets and then and then kind of move forward and then set up a stationary command post once i've gotten my eyes there um and i i just didn't do that i even had uh lieutenant floyd who was acting bc for c shift he ended up showing up um afterwards and I had an opportunity to move him into a safety officer position. He clearly let me know, hey, I have all my gear. I'm good to go. I can go, you know, Charlie. And instead I used him more as a support senior advisor role. And I should have put him as safety so I could have maintained a more stationary command, especially as we had a progressing scene or a, a large scene that required that level of um, attention. So, um, for me, my lesson learned was even though I've gotten accustomed or I'm fairly comfortable with communication and, and, and managing resources in my head, we were one, I, I would say we potentially could have been one mishap away from me not being able to effectively manage the scene because I was task saturated or saturated in other things around me and I didn't have that you know, environmental exclusion that I probably needed later in the scene. So I think it's important, just to recap, that our, our incident commanders are getting a good idea of what's happening on the scene by doing their own 360, you know, putting a dent in some of the NIOSH top five issues, but also still getting back and getting into an environment where they can formulate their thoughts, make and make strategic decisions for the incident moving forward.